what's up you guys and welcome to today's video i'm just gonna be doing a little get ready with me playing around with some makeup we're gonna ultimately get this result which is just like a subtle everyday light makeup if you will um i do have some indie eyeshadow accents going on which is always fun um an old goodie that i will show you so stay tuned for that towards the end of the video but the beginning of this video is primarily focused on some new products that i wanted to just play around with it's not really a review of any kind but it's a couple of things that I needed to replace in my collection. I wasn't sure where to start because my favorites have been discontinued. So I went with some recommendations of online friends and beauty YouTubers. And I picked up the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Coreless 12 Plus Hour Wear Normal to Oily Skin. I have it in the shade Pure Beige 235. I wanted to try and play around with this. I love a good matte or like demi-matte soft matte formula. It's probably one of my favorites. It's been harder to find stuff like that. Glowy Radiant Skin has been in. I also picked up the NYX Professional Bear With Me Concealer Serum. The word serum had me intrigued, much like balm. I just like my ears perked up and I had to try it. Um, and Ali Glines and many other people online recommend this one, especially on Instagram. Another NYX product I got is this finishing powder and I got the shade Banana. I was tempted to try the translucent, but since this banana shade reminds me so much of what's in the contour palette of NYX that I have, it has like a bunch of um, deep contour shades and a banana shade that I'm always running out of. So being able to have something I can touch up and has a little color to it is a finishing powder. Like if this is anything like how that other product performs and I can take it with me and touch up, like that's exactly what I've been needing. These are the three base products that I really just wanted to focus on, play around with, kind of demo for you guys. Let's go ahead and jump on into the video. Okay, so let's start with this matte and poreless. We're not gonna test it for 12 hours, but let's go. Just tap some on to my giant foundation brush. Ooh, that looks like a lot. Tap two brushes together. Okay. That should be a little bit better. And then go back in the original brush. This is going to have high coverage. It's going to have low coverage. I'm just going to... looks like a good color. It's nice. It's very, like, lightweight. Um, applying it with a giant brush like this kind of helps really any formula be a little bit more lightweight feeling. Um, this looks really good. I think I would normally stop here, but just to play around with this, I'm going to add a little bit more across my cheeks for a little bit more coverage. See how buildable it is? See, this color's a little bit golden on me. Most things are, though, so I think I did okay with the color match. I just picked it online. Okay, let's see what we think. This finish, it's a little bit tacky to the touch still. Foundations are so hard and I feel like for me personally as a makeup collector, makeup lover, makeup user, like it's the most disappointing when it doesn't work out. I don't know why. I guess it's just like such a big part of the process. It's literally like the primer after the primer for me. Next thing for me to try is the Bear With Me Concealer Serum. Serum is another buzzword, kind of like balm. I'm intrigued when like base products have it in there. So a concealer with serum and I hear really good things and so I wanted to try it. I got the shade just beige. So let's see how this works out. Most of my concealers are like very light and for brightening. I wanted to aim to get more of my foundation colors, so we'll see how I did. This is a pump. I'm not exactly sure on my methods yet on how I like to do this. Ooh, that looks like a lot. That looks like a lot. Okay, let's just tap this on. Okay, so it's a little lighter. I was hoping it was more gonna match like 
foundation. So I could have gone a little bit deeper. It's just really hard. They have limited like undertone selections. Most of them said golden. And I try to stick with things that are more like neutral. Really pretty. It's kind of dewy, so we'll see how it looks after I powder everything. Typically, don't like super radiant under eyes. It's really pretty, the coverage and everything. And then I just kind of use this big brush today, almost like a small foundation brush, just to kind of pat that in. Ooh, super cute. Okay, so last thing I'm gonna use um, is a powder, and then I have one cream product that I know like goes fine over powder, and it is the NYX um, Finishing Powder in the shade Banana. I was really torn between Banana and the Translucent, and I'm pretty sure this is like almost the same thing, um, shade and formula as like my NYX Contour palette, and it has like a banana looking shade in there that I always run out of, I always replace, like I love that. Um, contour palette and I always wanted something that was like a touch-up powder with a little bit of color to it um, but also had a blurring effect something that could go over my makeup and like set but also touch up so this is something that I think will do that I want to see how this looks mm, yep okay that that's really nice. Those, that trio of new products that I haven't tried. Oh, yeah, everything feels so soft and smooth. Ooh, how pretty. I'm gonna use at first blush from ColourPop. I'm just gonna dab this little bubblegum pink on the apples. And even though I just powdered, like I would normally probably put this on first. I shouldn't say I would normally, I really am 50-50, but usually you keep cream before powder but I know that this goes well under or over powder so I wasn't too worried about it which is why I wanted to see that powder in action first. So just so you know if you have a cream product you should probably use it before your powders but these super shock ones seem to be pretty versatile and I'm using this elf putty brush I rant and rave about these I have several of them I love them for cream products. All right, I'm going to take like a fluffier brush and this very light bronzer color. This um, formula by Clinique, what do they call this? The Powder Pop Flower Bronzer. This is in the shade Solar Pop. It's just very nice, natural, and subtle. Like you cannot overdo this. This is not one where you, at least specifically, like, can really over powder or over overdo it. So it's nice for like no makeup makeup days or when I'm going for a little bit more natural aesthetic. Like right now, I guess that's kind of what I'm doing. Ooh, I could do this all day. Somebody stop me. <laughs> okay, I just marked my... Uh, these nails, by the way, are from Glamour Made, and they're part of their Handmade series. So they're ones that like are a little bit um, marked up a little bit higher, and they're hand painted. And um, they have a nail gel on them. I don't know, they're really cool and like multi multi chrome. I love them so much, but they only last like maybe three days on me and my lifestyle. But I, that's perfect for me to just kind of glue some on, press some on enjoy it for a few days and move on and heather pop it's their cheek pop blush pop formula i don't know some of these brands need to calm down with how many names like they're giving things and the description words and it's like ooh, <laughs> it can be a lot sometimes or is that just me okay i'm gonna go ahead and go over everything one more time with this powder really pretty fluff and comb my brows here. I haven't really been doing my brows that much this summer. Brows and mascara I've been wearing a lot less actually than I used to. If um, you want some brow tips and tricks, what I do, 
with a micro pencil is I usually try and get what I'm trying to achieve in the least amount of strokes as possible. So one, two, gently fill in. And I'm changing the pressure. Like when I'm doing these little flicks, I am like lifting and not doing as much pressure because I don't want a very distinct line. I want it to be a soft line. So yeah, subtle difference. And it's usually just the arches that need a little work to define what's going on on my eye shape. go. Even combing them out again will sometimes soften anything you've done. And if you need an eraser, just taking the spoolie, I can kind of run it along and gently erase without like picking up too much underneath. So I do want to put on some lips. I'm going to do um, Taurus is the ColourPop liner I'm using. It's discontinued. It's just like a purpley nude brown. Um, if terracotta leaned a little less orange and more plum, it's kind of that. And I'm just going to gently like tap it out to soften and blur that. I'm going to put a liquid lip over it. The liquid lip I'm using is from Moira, and it is their Divine Lip, Lip Divine, and it is in the shade Nude. It's like their lightest one, and without a liner, it is borderline too light on me. But I, I use it as a staple with a liner all the time. It's just really nice because a lot of times I go like really over the top of the eyes, so this is a nice little accent. So I'm going to do mascara. And then my eyeshadow. I know, I know, I'm wild. And I'm using the Clinique High Impact Mascara. Longtime favorite, a little bit more expensive. I think drugstore um, mascaras are really, really good, but I always gravitate back to this one. It just doesn't overcoat lashes the way drugstores can sometimes, like, I don't know, for me, there's always a sweet spot in the tube as far as, like, brand new will just pause it too much, and then you get to that sweet spot where, like, it applies just the right amount. I find that with this product, like, I always just get the right amount. I'm going to top out my lids, have a little bit of creasing because I didn't powder them earlier. I'm going to be going into one of my like BYOP palettes and it just has like a bunch of neutrals and then two shimmers I reach for a lot from Give Me Glow the Giant Pans, rest in peace giant pans. Okay and I'm going to dip into this like plum shade, it looks a little intense, it's like a mauve, um, this is called Blackberry and it's from MAC. It's one of my favorite neutrals and in like the mauve family. It applies very buildable, a lot like ColourPop, but even better, I think. Um, it swatches terrible, so I feel like MAC goes unloved. But this is one of my favorite neutral shades. It's like just right. Sometimes I get a little bored of very warm shades. They just always look really orange on me, and cooler shades aren't the most flattering. And this is like a nice, like warm, cool shade because it's got just the right amount of balance of that plum. And it's very contouring, so even though it was a little intimidating in the pan here, it's kind of sheer and builds up. I just like to take kind of a long bristle fluffy brush, and I'm only going to contour like the inner part here. I didn't prime my lids or anything lately. The more I add primers, the more textured my lids look, so I've just been doing like very light foundation or concealer as you saw whatever lands on there I just kind of tap it out make sure it's like smooth and even and I don't have as many issues with like textured looking lids I 
a lot of times it doesn't really matter because I'm doing so many like indie sparkly shadows with like texture and flakiness and glitter anyway but on a day-to-day -day basis where I'm just kind of want like a subtle effect a little bit more contouring I still like a little bit of grunge so I'm like doing like a contour on the inside up to my eyebrow and fluffing it out and that's it. So it's very subtle. That's all I'm going to do for matte. So I'm going to do the other eye real quick and then I'll show you what I'm using for inner corner. Okay, so I added um, a little vanilla like matte shade on the outside. You can use like your setting powder or whatever you want. I just kind of like met that shade to soften everything and blur the edges. And then I went in with some NYX glitter glue on this little brush here. I'm going to go into this older palette from Bella Beauté Bar throwback. I did a whole video on this and trying them out. But yeah, this is the Starcross Lovers palette. I like this one. Um, I kind of laugh because at the time I did that video, I think it was like two years now, <laughs> I was really nitpicking. I kept saying, I'm nitpicking, I'm nitpicking. But it, because it was my most expensive palette, I think I paid $49 in the shipping for this. And now I giggle because when I talk about it and bringing it up, I think it's like my least expensive indie palette <laughs> two years later. So yeah, and you know, you know, um, indie shadows are really, really pack a punch. And so they're worth that extra um, money in most cases. And especially with Bella Beauty Bar, they probably have my favorite like indie formula sparkle. They are so amazing. Like I love my Give Me Glow for like everyday like metallic and shimmer and those are intense but this is like something else i'm gonna go into star crossed hitting huge pan on this i'm gonna be sad when this shade is done and i really enjoy it and love this star cross shade so i'm gonna put this in the inner corner today oh it's so pretty and i'm i don't want to go too crazy i just want it to be like that low pop everything else is subtle And I'm just pressing in because the nature of this particular shade, um, it's very, very foily. So it kind of needs to be like pressed into the skin. I love those types of formulas. I usually refer to them as like chunky or flaky. Without the glitter glue, I'm just going to tap a little bit lower here and just sort of draw it into part of my under eye and that's it. If you don't really want to purchase MAC or don't have anything similar to that shade Blackberry I talked about, which is probably very hard to find something similar, I find that to be quite the little gem as far as just the right tone, just the right like formula. Um, I think this palette from ColourPop would be like kind of good to try. It doesn't have that plum tone to it, but it's still a nice like neutral but cool kind of tone palette. And I do like that palette too for doing the same effect. I just wanted something with a little bit pinky purple undertone for like my top and stuff. So yeah, and this top I got from Cider. It's like this stretchy dry fit, almost like swimsuit material. And it's just like a little like half shirt. I don't know, it was very like ballet core. I couldn't resist. It's really, really cute. I went with my nails, so anyways. <laughs> That's it for today's video you guys thanks for hanging out with me checking out some really good finds and recommendations from you guys my instagram friends and other youtubers i really like the way this look came out and i'm really excited to play around with these newer products with some of other favorites of mine thanks for hanging out with me today and i'll see you in the next one Bye.